This video covering probability, sample spaces and Venn diagrams is all covered within Maths GCSE, but it's just a recap and ensure that we are very confident in these topics. So first of all, we're just going to look at what a sample space diagram is and quite a few examples. All of these diagrams represent a sample space for two events. So here we've got the rolling of two dice the red dice and the blue dice, and this has become a diagram here for the sum of the scores on both dice. Okay, both of which are useful. Here we've got a number of different sample space diagrams, and sample space here tells you what it could be. So if I flip a coin once, it could be a head or a tail, that's the whole sample space. Now if you look here, it tells you a few different ways you can demonstrate this. If I'm flipping two coins, this is a list of what I could get. I could have it in two tables, my first coin, my second, sorry, in one table, my first coin and my second coin, and this is my outcomes, it's the same here. Because it's a tree diagram that you'll have seen at Maths GCSE, with the outcomes at the end here. But for all of these three diagrams, your sample space is actually heads, 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 tails, 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 sorry, tails, heads, and tails, tails. So you've got a number of different options of sample space diagrams here, and the actual sample space here is the list of all the outcomes which are possible. So let's make sure we've got the definition down. So if you ensure that you have your definition down, a sample space, sometimes just known as capital S, is a list of all possible outcomes of a particular experiment, in this case, flipping two coins. But if you notice from our learning objective, we want for up to three events, so we're going to look at what that could look like too. Obviously when there's three events you're going to struggle to do a table like this, but you can still do a list or a tree diagram. For example, this is a tree diagram which is going to represent the sample or sample space of choosing three students and whether they're boys or girls. So here would be the list derived from the tree diagram. You don't need to do a tree diagram for this. You could just look at, okay, probability of getting three boys. There's only one way of getting that, boy, boy, boy. Okay, how could I get two boys? Well, I could get it like boy, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, or girl, boy, boy. How could I get two girls? Girl, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl or boy, girl, girl, and how could I get three girls like this? And this is going to be your full sample space, either like this or like this. It's your choice, so long as you write the full list. The last thing we're going to do before moving on from that is using this for probabilities. So let's look at a couple of these. Since we've already got this in front of us, let's say from this sample space, I want the probability of two girls being chosen, exactly two girls being chosen. Well here, my two girls are these pieces, so it's three out of eight. It's probably two of two girls. However, if I wanted the probability of at least two girls, not only have I got the ones with two girls, I've also got the one with three girls, so that'd be four out of eight, which is a half. And lastly on this, I'm going to look at this table and I'm going to look at the probability that I get a total score of 8. Okay, the probability of 8, well I've got 8 here, 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 so that's 5. And there's a total of 36 boxes here, and I know that because there's 6 by 6. So 5, 36, okay. I could do a couple of other things with this. Probability that it's even score. Okay, and I would just add up all my even scores. Which unsurprisingly is going to be a half. So now we've looked at sample space diagrams, we're going to move on to Venn diagrams. So here's an example of a Venn diagram. 
In this case, it's got three events because that's what our learning objective is asking for. So we've got human, cartoon and female. This here means that Lisa is all three of these. John Venn is just human, Pink Panther just cartoon, Bart is human and cartoon, but he isn't female, etc. And Kermit the Frog is out here by himself because he's not female or human or cartoon. So let's look at this worked example. Once again, this is going to be a free event Venn diagram. We've got a lot of writing here, which can be quite overwhelming. We're just going to take it one line at a time. So first of all, 30 people in an office, Lara records what A-levels they have. We're looking at A, B and L, so let's draw this out for a Venn diagram. So let's fill in what we know. First of all, let's have our art, biology and Latin. Okay, we're told the whole amount of biology, Latin and art, that's not a lot of good for us at the moment, but we do know these things are more useful. So let's start with this. Two who have A-levels in all three subjects. Two. Okay. Four have A-levels in Latin and art. So Latin and art as all of this bit. We've already got two there. So if there's four in total, there's got to be two more there. Likewise, Biology and Latin is this piece here. There's three in total, so you can have one here, and then the same way for art and biology, one here. Okay. Now let's look at total Latin is eight. Well, if I look what's already involved in my Latin circle, I've already got five there, so I've got three more to go. Likewise for biology, I've already got four, so I've got four more to go. And for art, I've already got five, but I need 12, so I've got seven more to go. Now I'm nearly there, but I need to check if that totals to my 30 people in my office, or if some people got no A-levels or different A-levels. So what I need to do is add up every single number that I can see. So I'm going to add seven, add one, add two, add two, add three, add one, add four, and that totals 20. But I need it to total 30, so I need to add another 10. So there is 10 in this outside part. So that's what it should look like, your Venn diagram. So I have now drawn my Venn diagram. One person is chosen at random. Calculate the probability they have an A-level in and I can't see the rest of the question at the moment because of my diagram, so I'm just going to move it around a bit. Okay, here's the rest of my question. One person is chosen at random. Calculate the probability they have an A-level in at least one of the three subjects. So it could be art or Latin or biology. Well, the easiest way of doing that is having a look at the fact there are 30 people all together. 10 people don't have an A-level in everything, so 20 people must. So the probability A level in at least one is 20 out of 30. Two thirds. Okay, let's have a look at the second one. Only one of the three subjects. Well, we now need to look at which parts we're interested in. This part only have an interest in A level in art. This only in Latin, and this only in biology. So I'm going to have 7 plus 4 plus 3 is 14 out of 30, which if I want I could simplify to 7 fifteenths. Okay, and my last one is Latin but not biology. So Latin is this circle here but I don't want the biology parts, so I don't want those parts there. So I just want my two and my three, which is five. Five out of 30, which once again, I can simplify if I want. Okay, brilliant. So really important to make sure your diagram is really, really clear for this. 
and feel free to use different colours to help yourself out as well. Often a Venn diagram will be in probabilities, as in with this case. So the Prime Minister makes a speech. The probability that newspaper G will put the speech as their main headline is 0 0.2 and for L is 0 0.8. But the probability that neither will is 0 0.1. We're going to draw a Venn diagram. Now in this case there are only two events, G and L, so the Venn diagram will look like this. OK, let's begin to label then. So I've got newspaper L and newspaper G. Now I know the probability that it will be for G, for the whole of the circle G, is 0 0.2. But that doesn't mean this bit 0 0.2, it means the whole thing. And likewise, the whole of L is 0 0.8. OK, well that still doesn't really help me much because I don't know about this intersection, it doesn't tell me about that. But it does tell me that neither is 0 0.1, so I do know that. So here... 0 0.1 is neither. Now, I know the whole thing has got to be all, everything has got to add up to a total probability, so it's got to add up to 1. So my intersection here, not my intersection, my whole, the union of them here, this whole thing, plus the outside, would add up to 1. Well, if that's 0 0.1 there, this whole shader bit is 0 0.9. Now what's interesting is if I add 0 0.2 and 0 0.8, I don't get 0 0.9, I get 1. And what this means is the middle bit here, which is counted once for G and once for L, it's been counted twice, that middle bit is the difference between what it should add up to and what it does add up to. So in this case, the difference is 0 0.1 which means that intersection is 0 0.1. In which case, what's left from L, where the probability should be 0 0.8, currently we've just got our 0 0.1, it's got to be 0 0.7, and likewise for G, it needs to be 0 0.2, we've got 0 0.1, so it'd have to be 0 0.1. And let's just check, if I add 0 0.7, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1, I do in fact get a whole. So I know that this table is correct, this Venn diagram even. So I have drawn my Venn diagram and now I need to use it to find the probability that both use the Prime Minister's speech. Well I've literally done that. My both bit is this part, my intersection of the two. So the probability of both equals 0 0.1. Now we have covered both our learning objectives. We have looked at sample spaces and Venn diagrams for two or three events. So have a go at some practice questions yourselves.